LeBron James taking heat for his reaction to the police shooting of 16-year-old Makai Bryant in Columbus, Ohio. LeBron James tweeted out a photo of the police officer who shot the black teenager with the caption, you're next, hashtag accountability. And an hourglass, you see the emoji? That generally means time's running out. Mm. James later deleted that tweet and acknowledged that emotions were running high. He also offered his sympathies to the teenager's family and tweeted this, I'm so damn tired, his word, of seeing black people killed by police. I took the tweet down because it's being used to create more hate. This isn't about one officer, it's about the entire system. And they always use our words to create more racism. I am so desperate for more accountability. But Republican Senator Ted Cruz says this type of reaction is getting to be all too common. This is a pattern where the left consistently goes after, attacks, and demonizes police officers. And they do so often before the facts are known, often before there's any evidence of what happened. In this instance, your next uh, could, could, could certainly be interpreted by some even for, as a call for violence. And I think it was a grossly irresponsible message for LeBron James to send out. Brian, uh, in all of your years of covering sports and, and being involved in sports, I'm curious to know your take on how this affects other athletes, to have someone of LeBron James stature come out like this, be stupid enough to think that he can delete a tweet that we can't see. Um, and, and what does that mean? Why, why isn't the commissioner saying anything? If, in fact, it's interpreted as violent or just not helpful. Uh, Harris, he's running the league. Uh, LeBron James runs the league. LeBron you know, James? And, yeah, LeBron James might as well. He's more powerful than the commissioner. What he says goes. And the old players check with him before they decide to not show up for a game or to protest for a game or, or to do whatever they want to do. That's how much power he has. And I will say this. I did, did a show with Jim Brown, who in the 1960s, along with uh, you know Will Chamberlain, Muhammad Ali, and so many others, uh, when athletes stood up and said, enough, in the 1960s and 70s, and he's worked with prisoners. So I know he wanted Michael Jordan to stand up and speak out for the longest time. And Jordan says, no, I'm not going to do that. So I think a lot of people are saying, I think athletes in this position, some say should speak up. But why not just take a breath? And why is he even on Twitter? Because if you go out and threaten somebody, I thought you get banned from Twitter. Didn't we learn that? Yes, suddenly, at least. You know, I'm still waiting to find, read that Hunter Biden story. And I don't think anyone there was any violent about that. But he came down and said, anger does not, uh, does not do anyone good. My anger is still here for what happened to that girl, my sympathy for her and her family. Justice will prevail. But I just think it's uh, blatantly irresponsible. It went out to 50 million people. But if you watch ESPN and the others, they lead every single sports center with athletes speaking out what a racist society we are. There is no balance anywhere there in sports. And their ratings are down 40 percent on TNT. They're down 40 percent on ABC and 20 percent on ESPN. And I think these things are related. People want a break. Wow. Kennedy. I don't want to hear from LeBron James. I don't want to hear from LeBron James because he has basically condoned genocide of the Uyghurs in China, and his actions on China have been utterly reprehensible. And, and those are people who are being sterilized and raped and slaughtered and put in concentration camps. And, you know, to me, that's, that's a really emotional issue. That's number one. Number two, he is uh, by far not near one of the greatest Lakers ever. Uh, he will never be Kobe. He will never be Shaq. And I would much rather hear from Shaq because he was a cop. And I would much rather hear from him, uh, ah. you know, not only his high, high profile, but the love he has for his community, but also having worn the badge and knowing what he does about law enforcement. That's the kind of athlete. And, and uh, I don't know, LeBron is getting old, and he's going to become Mr. Pump Fake here pretty uh, soon. <laughs> I, I'm always curious when I hear anyone of color say something like what he, he tweeted. They always use our words. Our who? Who does he represent exactly in this country? We're not monolithic as people of color, as blacks, African Americans, whatever you want to call us. We're not. We don't all think the same. You can't speak for one. In fact, we've seen protesting that had no leadership on the ground since last summer. So, so there's not even anybody volunteering to speak up for the whole quote unquote black community, even though there are many communities of color. Kaylee. 
Yeah, that's right. And he, he said that because he's desperate to uh, find a way to blame others for his heinous tweet and his mistake. I agree with Kennedy. I'd rather hear from Shaquille O'Neal, the great Shaq. That aside, mm -hmm. uh, with LeBron James, you know, he had the audacity to mention accountability. I would like to see accountability for a leftist saying something wholly inappropriate, putting a target on the back of a police officer. Um, for a moment, think that this was not some celebrity athlete from the left, LeBron James. Let's say his name was LeBron Trump and he was a right-wing activist. He would be banned from Twitter. Uh, he would lose his job, likely, all of his sponsorships, and he would be relegated uh, to the outskirts of society. There is one standard for the left uh, and another standard for the right, and this just makes it crystal clear with no retribution here from Twitter for that appalling tweet. So, Emily, I want to lean on your legal acumen now, because this has become a trend. Congresswoman Maxine Waters and her incendiary comments on the ground in Minneapolis right before a verdict in the Derek Chauvin case calling for protesters to stay on the streets and get more confrontational. This tweet that LeBron thinks that he can wipe away by deleting, even though most people would snapshot it the second you thought it because most people didn't even believe it was him. Um, you know, his tweet that is also incendiary. E even if you don't take every word of it to mean violence, then why did you put that hourglass emoji up there? Like, what, what's that all about? I mean, what, what is, how does the law look at stuff like this? Forget about Twitter. They're probably not going to suspend his account because they're fans, whatever. But, but you're really not allowed to yell fire in a crowded theater where there is no fire. That's not protected speech. Right. And so to answer your question, you know, legally, all threats are taken seriously. And really, if they're actually actionable, uh, is there sort of the, the wheels are put in motion? And I think, there, you know, there's there's a criminal element to inchoate crimes. You can incite something without there actually be that horrible result that you call for. Um, in the civil arena, you'd have to have damages for it. But I think that the larger conversation is such that why is why are some threats acceptable and some aren't? When does a threat become real? If people are put in fear, regardless, especially from someone so influential, then that's a real impact. And quick point, if I may, based on um, just taking Kennedy's ball a bit further there, remember when the general manager of the Rockets just said, I stand with Hong Kong. He just tweeted that. There was a firestorm. The owner of the Rockets distanced himself from him. He had the general manager had to apologize. Eventually, he resigned. There were high-profile athletes that publicly tweeted apologies to China. The disparate reaction here, as compared with theirs, so mind-boggling. And it's so ridiculous to see how, apparently, money is simply the driving factor that gets mm. everyone on board when you have things like this. Again, going back to that Derek Chauvin trial as well, remember the prosecution. It's so easy, it's so simple to say we support law enforcement and we don't support aberrant actions, which this isn't. But um, I think that there illustrates the fact that you can support both. You can take that human approach without vilifying all of law enforcement. Look, 19 percent of law enforcement in America are former military. And we're seeing growing numbers mm -hmm. of people of color my racial minorities making up police departments across the country. So where do we go when we reach some sort of a balance there? How will LeBron James characterize policing in America if he can't make it about race? I want your last thought, Brian. My, uh, my last thought is, uh, is this. LeBron James has to take a step back. They all have to take a step back. They have to get reined in. On your point, uh, Emily, that you just brought up, not only did when the Rockets owner came out and said, you know, um, I support Hong Kong, China banned the NBA, and LeBron was mm. critical of the GM, who basically he called him ignorant, not understanding business. And then NBC, excuse me, uh, the NBA cut a deal, we don't know the details of it, to get back in China. So now they're seeing China. So they sold their soul for billions. Mm.